Welcome to Vlogmas Day 5. Today I wanted to talk about my knitting origin story. I'm a self-taught knitter. I didn't know anybody who knit. I didn't know... I was never taught to knit, anything like that. Um, and I didn't start knitting till I was an adult. It was, I think, around 2007, 2008. I was at school in the university and I was running out of money and my f my student job that I had, um, a full-time position opened up. So I decided to take that full-time position and I became staff for the university um, as opposed to a student employee. I kind of dropped out of school, but I didn't really because I kept taking classes. Part of my benefits package was six free credits a semester. And so I was taking one or two classes a semester um, and working full time. And because I was working full time, I kind of felt like a school dropout. So I was living in, a, in an apartment with girls who were all full time students. Um, all my social circle where everyone were full time students, and it, it made me feel a little bit displaced because I felt like I was so close to that world but just a little bit out of it. I don't know, I don't know. I was in a kind of a weird headspace. I was really, 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 I was really wanting to get a dog. <laughs> That's the short story. I really, really, really wanted a dog. But I lived in an apartment where there were no animals allowed. It's kind of hard to find housing where pets are allowed. But I was doing all this research and I wanted to adopt a greyhound, a retired racing greyhound. They're such awesome dogs. They're big dogs. And as I was, I was doing tons and tons of research about them, just reading up about them and everything that they would need. On one of the websites I came across, it was saying how greyhounds are rather, they have very short coats, so they get very cold and they just have very thin skin, <laughs> like literally. Um, so she's like, so I knit a dog's, a sweater for my dog. And I was like, oh, if I'm gonna get a greyhound, I have to learn to knit because I have to knit a sweater for my greyhound. Like that was the plan. And so I was like, well, geez, I better learn to knit. I don't know anything about this, but I better go get some yarn or whatever. So, <laughs> so I went to the store, Joann's or whatever. I had no idea what I was doing. I bought some like really cheap kind of ugly yellow yarn and I, I watched a couple of YouTube videos. I was really struggling with the cast on, but I had a roommate who was like, oh, I'll help you with that, but she was super busy, so she kind of helped me once. Um, but mostly I had to figure it out on my own. And so I knit this, uh, I was like, oh, I'll make a scarf. You know how all knitters start out with, I'm gonna make a scarf because it's just like a square. But as I was knitting, I was like, I know this isn't gonna be anything even remotely usable because it was just full of holes and gaps and uneven tension and it just, it looked really awful, but at the same time, I was really proud of myself. I was like, wow, this is a thing that I did, and it's ugly. But to further my practice, I was like, well, I'm just going to knit everybody in my family a blanket. Well, there's a great idea. So I was looking at yarn at Joann's. It was one of those things where you find the yarn, it has a free pattern on it, and it's like, free little afghan throw. And I was like, perfect! <laughs> and what you did, you had to hold, I think you were holding three colors together at the same time. And so I had the giant straight needles that were about this big around, holding three colors of a very thick, like, Aran to chunky weight yarn. And I knit probably seven or eight or nine, maybe even ten blankets, and gave them to all my family for Christmas and a few other friends, random people. And then that was a lot of fun and I end up, ended up moving to a place but I didn't get a dog. It just wasn't working out. There were circumstances, it never worked out. I, I still to this day have never adopted a greyhound, which makes me sad, but someday I will. So that was around 2002, 2008-ish, 2009 Christmas maybe, I'm not sure. 
And then I didn't touch my knitting needles again for five or six years. I just, I, I just didn't do it. So around 2013, I was in my very last semester of school. I was finally going to graduate. Um, so I decided to quit my job that was giving me the benefits of free schooling. I finished school. I got married. We bought a house and we were moving. So there's about a three month span where I didn't have a job. And I was really busy for about two months of that. But that last month I was really starting to go crazy. So I was just like, maybe I'll pick up my knitting needles again. And so I did. And that was when I first discovered Ravelry. And I was like, this is kind of cool. And because I had been searching technique videos on YouTube, um, YouTube was suggesting different videos and there was like knitting podcast. And I was like, what? And my very first knitting podcast back in 2013 was Kristen of Vullenbein, Yarngasm then. And I was like, people watch this like talking about knitting for like 45 minutes. I just thought it was so bizarre. <laughs> but I was hooked, like I was so hooked. And she had just started dyeing yarn and I hopped on the website and bought some yarn right then. And I was like, ooh, this is cool. I still haven't knit that yarn, but I, I like hold it very, it's almost kind of like special, like vintage Vullenbein yarns. <laughs> but that's kind of when I, I slowly, slowly got back into knitting at that point because I was getting really stir crazy before I got my job at the garden center at Sun River Gardens, which is kind of where the sprouts part of needles and sprouts comes in. Because it was when I was working at Sun River Gardens that uh, Tori, my, my usual co-host on Needles and Sprouts, who she had been my roommate years ago. She saw my picture on the Sun River Gardens website and sent me an email. I was like, hey, is this really you? Do you really work here? And I was like, yes, I do. We hadn't connected. I'm not on Facebook, so we weren't connected. It had been a while. Even though we'd been good friends and roommates, we hadn't seen each other in uh, several years. We reconnected. Um, she joined our book club that we have. There's about five of us girls who have a book club and we meet every month. And then I slowly convinced her. I was like, Tori, start a podcast with me. <laughs> well, that's how Needles and Sprouts came together. Um, Cause Tori loves gardening. I worked at a garden center. I also enjoy gardening. Um, and anyway, so that's when my knitting really picked up. So as you can see, the there is no shaping the front and back are identical which means this neckline is a little bit weird because it it's a little bit high right here and it it's not the most yeah it's just it's very 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 plain very simple but i still wear it a lot actually and i knit it out of i can't remember but i do know that it was lion brand <laughs> But it was something with at least 20% wool. So it was one of their like 20% wool, 80% acrylic blends. And this is the sweater where I, my strange attraction to pink developed, which is weird because before, up until I started knitting basically, or till I knit this sweater, I was like almost militantly anti-pink. Like pink was not my color. Black is my probably my favorite color to wear. And I just like, pink is horrible, pink is ugly. Um, <laughs> but I wanted, I was like, I'm gonna break out of my color zone and my comfort zone, my preference spectrum, and knit with a color that I wouldn't normally pick. So I picked this pink, and ever since then, I've been kind of, not, I'm not obsessed with pink, but I'm really drawn to it in a way that is really unexpected and really different for me. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't mind it. I'm still proud of it. I wear it. I think I did a really good job on the seaming because it's, it's knit in pieces and then seamed together. And I think especially this seam right here, the raglan seams, I think I did a really good job. So this is my very first sweater and that is my, the long version of my knitting origin story. So thanks for watching.